What's going on folks? Curtis Oaks over at Premium Outfitters USA and we're going to do a little uh, update on what's going on in the firearms community in the news right now. So HR 5717. This is the Gunmageddon uh, type of legislature that we all fear. This is a very, very comprehensive attack on our Second Amendment rights. Now this one was written up by Mr. Johnson of Georgia. Uh, he is, and, and this isn't to be polarized in any way, I just want to put this out there because I, I noticed something interesting when I was doing my research on this bill, and that is that it was not only drafted by a Democrat, but it only has Democratic support as well. So there's 18 uh, Democratic uh, representatives that are supporting this bill in the House, and this was drafted up January 30th of this year. And where it, the last move it made was on the 10th of this month, and it's still in the House right now. So what I want to do is I want to go over some of this, uh, some of what's in this bill, talk to you guys about it. Uh, I believe there's eight different titles, eight different sections for those of you who aren't too familiar with it. And the first one is going to be firearm licensing. Um, we'll talk about that. I just want to get them out there real quick. The background check reform is number two. Number three is uh, firearms possession. Number four is extreme risk protection orders, uh, the assault weapons, firearms, and silencer and muffler ban. We've got firearm trafficking, dealer reform, industry reform, and firearm, and then it goes into the actual bill itself. Now, if you guys want to, if you guys want to see this, I'm looking at it here on my computer so I can reference it. There's so much information here. I don't want to give you. I don't want to say something and be uh, uh, be incorrect about what I'm telling you guys. So let's start at the beginning, I guess, the, uh, the firearms licensing. Now, for those of you who are in Illinois, you're probably somewhat used to something like this. It's called the FOID card, Firearm Owner Identification Card, which we use here in the state of Illinois. Um, now, what this is going to do is essentially make a federal version of the FOID card. So you will have to get a federal license to not only handle obtain or just anything with firearms. You cannot do anything with them without this license. Now, to, to how do you get the license, right? So to get the license, you're gonna have to take a class, which is going to be in a classroom, and then you'll have to take a written test. After that, you're going to have to demonstrate safety proficiency with the firearm, and then you're gonna have to qualify. Well, how in the world is that supposed to work? If you've never shot a gun before, I mean, let's, 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 let's fast forward into the future a little bit, if this were to pass, hypothetically speaking. So, and you can't, and in here, you cannot own or fire, work around, you can't even work for a firearms company until the age of 21. There's an age restriction in here. So how's this going to work? Uh, you're going to go sit in a classroom and all of a sudden you're expected to pick up a firearm for your first time and then accurately shoot rounds down range. I mean, is, I, I don't, so that being said, there's going to be a, a, a very high fail rate. I would imagine just, just, just speculating, um, from different instructor, different classes that I've taught over the years, different curriculums that I've seen. I don't see this as being something that, uh, anyone realistically is going to be able to pass without, some sort of outside background uh, help just going into it. So that's the, and, and there, it, it's kind of confusing to me, guys. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not somebody who sits here and reads this stuff all the time and can understand it perfectly. But it did mention something that like, if the state had something already in place that you would not have to get the federal one, but that the state one would have to meet the criteria, obviously, of this new uh, licensing program. So I think Illinois might be the only state that would be okay if this were to pass. Um, which is funny because Illinois is trying to get rid of the Floyd card last I knew. So uh, background check reform, uh, seven day waiting period. That's, that's the main thing. It'd be a seven day waiting period on all firearms purchases. Uh, universal background checks, of course, and reporting of back check denials. Now, at this point of reading this, it's like, okay, so why are they going to report the denials? Well, what it is, is later on in this, in this bill, as you go through it, they start talking about red flag laws on the federal level. So my, my speculation is, based off the denials that they record, uh, the people that are denied permission to have a firearms uh, 
firearm owner identification card uh, that are not felons. So it's not that they legally can't own it. It's just that for whatever reason, um, maybe their neighbor's scared of them or something. I, I don't really, it's kind of misleading how, how they, how this all works out in the end. Um, so that is the background check reform. And then, um, Back onto the licensing too. So when you go to renew your licensing, they're going to expect that you re, re redo your background check, resubmit all that stuff as well. No big deal there. That's really nothing new in my opinion, the background check stuff for uh, firearms purchasing. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Firearm possession, uh, protecting victims of domestic violence. Uh, minimum age for purchasing firearms and ammunition. Like I said earlier in this, it is going to be 21 years of age. Now, there's something interesting that they bring up in here, and that's, uh, I forget the exact word that they use for it, but essentially, you cannot go to the store and buy ammunition for your dad, for your brother, for your cousin, for your friend. You, the ammunition you purchase, you have to use, so there's no uh, straw purchasing. Um, no straw purchasing of ammunition. If you're caught, it's, I believe they say, a $2,000 fine and up to two years in jail. Now, that's a little steep, uh, especially if, you know, it, it, it defeats the purpose. Hey, I'm at this store. We shoot this ammo. I can't buy this ammo for you to save you a couple dollars. Uh, extreme risk protection orders. So this is where they get into, oh, uh, hold on real quick. Step back to firearms possession. Uh, Gun-free school zones. They want to expand the radius is the way I interpreted that. Um, not really sure what's there. Then the uh, the safety of the firearms, they want them all locked in a safe, essentially, or the firearm mechanism has to be locked sufficiently so that the firearm can't discharge. Uh, or in a, in a, a locking system that obstructs the chamber and doesn't allow the firearm to fire. The ex Now, the extreme risk protection orders, these can be done uh, by the ATF. These can be done by someone filing a complaint and saying that they're scared of you or something like that. Um, the other thing that's really ri that's that's really an issue with this is there is a potential that you can be considered a long term risk where you wouldn't be able to get the firearm, but you haven't committed any felony. So there's a specific a specific word that they they use in here quite a few times and it's basically if they suspect it's 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 to that tune if they suspect that you're capable of being a threat uh to society that they can deny you your firearms license so just suspicion essentially um which that's a very slippery slope so, I mean, realistically speaking, people could just start making false claims. Now, here's the thing that worries me the most. The, false, the people that make false reports, because it does bring that up in here, they're subject to a uh, fine no less than $1,000. That's all it says. It doesn't say there's a maximum. It doesn't say, you know, a minimum, you know, any sort of confinement or anything. $1,000. There's not a single fine where it's that low anywhere else in this document. The only thing it's $1,000 is if someone false reports you. And they can confiscate your firearms and your ammunition if you're deemed an un, uh, unsafe or not someone were, uh, allowed to have a license per these, these guidelines that they have in here. Uh, <laughs> this, is, this, is the one, this is the big one, folks. And this is, you know, um, I sort of had a feeling... And, I, and, and this only recently got brought to my, my attention, but I sort of had a feeling, you know, with all this coronavirus stuff taking up all the media time, it's everything everyone's concerned about. It's everything everyone's talking about. Every time something big like this happens, Big Brother will, for whatever reason, they pass these bills that help the situation. But there's so many things, so many irrelevant things that are included within that. Uh, it's kind of disgusting. And that's, I feel like that's what they're trying to do right now. They're trying to take advantage of the fact that we're in this social distancing thing. We can't go out necessarily and vote as easily as we can't do things the way that we were doing things. So I feel like they're trying to slip this through. And this is, this is the big, this is the big one right here, guys. Um, it's a giant list. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and open this one up real quick so I can give you guys 
some of the accurate. I'm just going to read from the top on this one. Uh, doo -doo -doo. These are the things that would be banned. Um, Semi-automatic pistol means... Any, any repeating pistol that utilizes a portion of energy of firing a cartridge to extract that fired cartridge case and chamber the next round and requires a separate pull of the trigger for each, uh, for each cartridge. Uh, Ten rounds, I believe, is what, what the actual cap is going to be for the semi-automatic handguns from reading this. This is just my interpretation of it. Uh, semi-automatic shotgun means any repeating shotgun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So these are just the definitions here, but the, the, the big issue is um, basically anything that has a detachable magazine that is over 10 rounds, you can't have it. It specifically goes into the name of some of the firearms, some of the manufacturers, you know, some of the guys that we even work with, Yankee Hill Machines listed on here with the uh, L15, POF, or I'm sorry, the uh, YHM-15 rifles, uh, Wyndham Weaponry, uh, do, do, do Ruger, the SR556, AR556. It specifically says AR15s, AR10s, AK47s of all variations. Uh, these will all be considered assault weapons and they will be banned. Um, it's it's all bad, guys. It's 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 nothing nothing good here. Uh, they're trying to ban basically everything that. We would use. They did. Sit, they did. They did make an exception to our 1022s. The two Fed 20, uh, 22 rifles are an exception, but uh, that's not what the Second Amendment's about. It, you know, the Second Amendment's about the people being able to keep and bear arms uninfringed. Uh, and back when the Second Amendment was written, everyone in the country had the same exact capabilities, rifle-wise. Today, that's not the case. We can't have machine guns. We can't have you know, functional tanks or anything like that, which, um, I mean, we can have tanks in certain parts of the United States, but I'm saying it, when, when all this was, when all this went down, it was muskets, it was muzzle loaders and, and everybody, the citizens, the military, the government, everybody had the same exact capabilities firepower wise. And that's, that's what the mentality was when this was written. So, uh, the fact that things have gotten as far as they have is really, really bothering. Uh, overall, uh, there's more to this. Hold on one second. I apologize, folks. I'm not the best at this. I'm still learning. Try to, uh, trying to get back to the top here. Alrighty. Uh, da -da 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 -da. firearm tracking. Yeah, we all knew that day was an attempt to come, of course. So firearm tracking, basically what they're talking about there is anything purchased after this date, they want records of all of it. Uh, the record keeping at the, uh, the ranges is going to be increased stringently. The um, uh, da, 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 retention of records, so they want, they want uh, it, from the way I read it, now, now again, I, I'm not, I don't completely understand this. It seems like they're almost going to make you fill out your uh, 4473 just to rent a gun to shoot it at the range and pass a background check before you even rent a gun. I, I don't know. I could be wrong there. Got, uh, and then, deal, oh, and then the other thing about the firearm purchasing, so you can only buy one gun a month. That's another thing that's uh, hidden in here. Uh, dealer reform, gun shop security measures. Some of these things are just unreal. So video surveillance, no big deal. Everyone would want that anyways. Uh, you have to show them how you're going to lock up your store, how you're going to secure everything. They recommend using concrete barriers uh, around the weak points of the building. I mean, this is just... Uh, very comprehensive. Oh, and you have to have a brick and mortar store. So this is really going to hurt the small guys like myself that I, I do gun shows. I operate out of my home at the current time until I do get a store. But if this were to go into effect tomorrow, I'd be out of business. Uh, or I'd be operating illegally by trying to stay in business during this. So that's that's one other thing that they've, they've got in here. You have to have a brick and mortar. And I believe it even stated that uh, your home, your your residential home address and your business address cannot be on the same property essentially or the same parcel of land uh 
This is just, uh, this is terrible. Absolutely terrible. Uh, I watched, I'm not going to lie, I watched, you know, I watched Iraqi Veteran 88 to see what he was going to say on his, and I watched a couple other people, and I didn't see it in here, but I, I'm willing to bet these guys aren't going to throw it out there if they didn't find it in here. And they were talking about uh, tax, the tax that was going to be coming along with this. So they, according to them, what they were saying in their in their YouTube video was 30% tax hike on uh, actual firearms and then a 50% additional tax on ammunition. So obviously they're, <laughs> they're going to make it to where it's, A, you got to get this license, which who knows how you're going to be able to get that and how much that's going to cost. Then when you get your license, it's going to be astronomically expensive to buy your firearm and then it's going to be even more expensive whenever you go to buy ammunition for your firearm and then with all these uh with the gun shops having to make all these changes if they are going to stay in business it's going to be very expensive for them so to offset the cost i wouldn't i wouldn't be surprised to see uh price for range time going up as well and things like that to try to offset some of these expenses to, to keep the business running i mean if the business runs out of money can't we can't we can't be there you know uh inspections so inspections okay the originally they had a limit to how many inspections they could do a year i'm not an ffl i don't have a store so i i have not personally had experience with it to my understanding they can come in once a year and inspect you randomly maybe even twice a year would be my guess but i wouldn't suspect they could do more than twice a year in here they get rid of that it is unlimited random inspection whenever they want and if you start getting sloppy with it or anything like that they can just kick you out of business take your license away and uh, basically destroy your life right there uh employee background checks i'm all for this uh before all this went down we were looking to potentially hire our first employee and i was going to do a background check on them of course with their consent uh if I was going to consider hiring them, obviously, given the circumstances, uh, we're not looking for help for gun shows because there are no gun shows at this time. So um, employee background checks, I'm for it. I'm with it. I like it. Great idea. Uh, do, 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 do. Gun store thefts, you have 30 days to report them. Civil enforcement. Uh, enhanced record keeping requirements. I forget what all they go into there, but uh, there are some new things that will be coming out for uh, that as well. And that is a general overview of what's in this bill. I apologize for not spending too much time on the camera here. Um, this is, you know, a lot of information. I was just trying to read through it and keep my mind fresh on what we're what we're working with here. Uh, basically. You guys need to, this is your call to action. You need to get out there and contact your representatives and let them know how you feel about HR 5717. And the only reason that I feel that they're bringing this up right now is because everyone's distracted and everyone's looking at other things like the Tiger King and the coronavirus and worried about uh, the health of their family and loved ones and they're not paying any attention to politics. Never mind the fact the news isn't giving any time to, uh, to anything outside of the coronavirus for that matter. So HR 5717, I'm going to put a link in the description so you guys can go review this information for yourself. Or if I left out any information that you had deeper questions on, you can go through it yourself and find that information as well. Uh, this is terrifying, folks. This is absolutely terrifying because if something like this were to pass, it would, uh, it would shut me down. And I don't know how long it would take me to be able to open up another location, so an actual location somewhere else. This is going, this could cripple almost all mom and pop shops across the United States based off the implications of this bill and the requirements of this bill and the things that would have to be changed to uh, fall into their, uh, fall into what they're after here. This is uh, not good. Not good at all. Very troublesome, very worrisome. I do have some good news, and I'm going to be doing another one of these on uh, California law that just uh, got, I believe it was a decision that was overturned, and that's based on the magazine capacity restrictions out there. But uh, that won't mean anything with that getting overturned if something like this monster gets passed. Now, uh, www.congress.gov slash bill slash 116th Congress House bill. 
Uh, it's kind of a long link. What I did and what you can do as well is just type in HR 5717. Make sure you're going to the government's website. Uh, should should look like this here and say congress.gov if you've got the uh, if you've got the right website. So that is what I have for you today. Um, go forth and do great things, people. I hope everyone's doing okay through this uh, crisis. I know at this point with how, how spread the pandemic has gotten, it's probably affected your family in one shape or form or another, whether it not be directly someone else that you're close to. Uh, try to stay in good spirits. Try to stay positive. Do the best you can given the circumstances. And uh, we'll get through this, folks. God bless. Love you.